Hi guys, welcome back to Switch Up. For those people that haven't had a chance to play Diablo on other platforms, I have my good friend Alan sat next to me, and he has come up with the top 10 things that you need to know about the game before it arrives on the Nintendo Switch. So without further ado, let's get into it. Diablo 3 is a dark, dingy dungeon crawler from Blizzard, the creators of Overwatch and World of Warcraft, among others. Set in the mythical world of Sanctuary, all is not as it seems, and dark powers are conspiring to bring an end to the world as you know it. There are five acts to play through, each with their own unique setting and feel, and each bringing you closer to the ultimate battle against Diablo himself. Okay, so the first thing you need to know about are the classes. Science, English, Maths... No, sorry, those are the wrong classes. Here we're talking Barbarian, Witch, Doctor, Wizard, Necromancer, Crusader, Demon Hunter and Monk. Each class has its own unique playstyle. Perhaps you prefer an evasive build that deals massive damage from range. Then a Wizard or a Demon Hunter is what you're after. Or perhaps you are more of a charge in and smash some heads up close and personal style. Then you will like a Barbarian or a Crusader. Whatever your preferred style, there's a class that will appeal and all of them represent the classic pedigree of the genre. Paladins, Crusader, Ranger, Demon Hunter, etc. I'm yet to play a class that I haven't enjoyed for one reason or another. There is a single player mode, however, if you want to get the most out of the game, co-op is where it's at. The difficulty of the game scales to the number of players in a group, much like Monster Hunter. More players equals tougher monsters, but also better loot and drop chances. Not to mention that some of the strongest strategies in the game rely on a combination of classes in support and DPS roles to maximize efficiency. Some combos allow you to adapt your character to suit your playstyle. For example, if you prefer supporting your teammates, you can go with a zero damage per second build on, say, a monk where you don't deal any damage, but you heal and buff your teammates, keeping them alive and helping them do insane amounts of damage. These support combos are often more effective than having a group of friends playing solo style but together. It's worth taking time to figure out how your chosen class complements the other classes in your group. By using the best tactics, you'll soon be defeating the toughest enemies. Diablo 3 is an absolute grind fest, but it isn't all grind. No, I lied, it's all grind. But that's not actually a bad thing. As grind goes, Diablo 3 gets the balance just right. You can spend countless hours searching for the perfect weapon without ever seeing it drop, let alone drop with well-rolled stats. Damn you, Wand of Woe. But as frustrating as all this is, it is incredibly addictive. There are so many ways to acquire the items you want in the game that no single effort is fruitless. All those useless legendaries that drop, well, you can melt them down and craft new items. Seasons. Seasons are challenge events that are run for a limited time. To participate in a season, you will need to start an entirely new character from scratch. You'll not be able to share your weapons or other equipment with your seasonal character. However, at the end of the season, your seasonal character will be added to your main account, and all the items in your inventory will be added to that account as well, as well as the XP you've earned. Seasons have their own unique rewards as well, such as pets, portrait frames, and much needed inventory space. For the particularly dedicated, you can even earn sweet cosmetics, like a set of wings for your character model. These items are coveted, so if you want a sweet set of wings, you'll have to work for them because the devs will not make it easy for you. Exactly what it says on the tin, this game mode is not for the faint of heart. Diablo is a game where you'll spend countless hours finely crafting your build, grinding endlessly for that perfect two-handed weapon or those shoulder pads with the exact stats you need. Imagine then the pain of losing all that time and effort. Well, hardcore mode offers just that. When your character is killed, they are, well, dead. That's right, finito, no more, expired, start over, all that equipment is gone, all those XP gains are gone. Those hours, yeah, you guessed it, they're gone. Why would anyone do this, you ask? Well, there isn't much that compares to the adrenaline rush that you get when you're sailing close to the edge in hardcore mode. So if you have a masochistic tendency, this could be right up your street. Set items are a big part of the end game builds for all classes. They're a special category of legendary items and are usually armor sets, but can also be weapons or jewelry pieces. Each class has multiple unique sets that can only be used by that class. They grant special set bonuses which allow you to inflict massive damage and provide insane survivability. When you start a seasonal character, there are achievements that you can complete during the season called your seasonal journey, which will grant you a full set for your class. This is called Hadrig's Gift, and what a gift it is. Once you have this first set, you'll be able to start pushing some fairly high greater rifts and get even better loot. And that's what this game is all about. Loot, loot, and more loot.
In addition to standard gems, diamonds, rubies, amethysts, topads and emeralds, which buff stats when inserted into armor that has sockets, when you complete a greater rift, you'll be rewarded with a legendary gem. These gems have some cool buffs as well as abilities that are unlocked by leveling them up. How do we level these gems, I hear you cry? Well, by completing greater rifts. In addition to a sweet hoard of loot and any gems and cool stuff when you complete a greater rift, you get a chance to level up your legendary gems. At level 25, the gems will unlock their main ability. From there on, this ability gets stronger with every level. However, you will need to complete harder and harder greater rifts in order to keep leveling your gems. You will know these strange creatures are around when you hear a creepy little laugh. It's like how I know Glenn's around. Find where it's coming from quickly and kill the goblin before it can teleport away and you will be rewarded with cheese. I lied again, there's no cheese in Diablo 3. Although there are cows. Lots and lots of cows. More on that later. Anyway, you'll be rewarded with a loot explosion. However, what you're really hoping for is the portal the goblin opens accidentally gets left open. If that happens, you're in for a real treat. A portal to the realm of greed. Here the treasure flows like a raging torrent. You'll feel like Scrooge McDuck as you swim in opulence. Eventually, you'll face the boss of the secret level, and when you defeat her, more cheese. I mean loot. Loot, that's what this game's all about, not cheese. Definitely not cheese. You can also open a portal here by yourself by destroying a legendary item called a puzzle ring in Kanai's Cube, an artifact that has many uses we'll discuss next. So, this is one of the key parts of the game. It's an artifact that you acquire through a side quest. It has many uses. You can upgrade rare items to a random legendary of the same type. You can reforge a legendary item, re-roll the whole thing, so you might actually end up with something worse. You can convert a set item, so on and so on. It really is key to refining your build, especially towards the end game, where you're trying to perfect those last few items. Cows, cows, cows. Magical, mythical cows. So, there is a legendary item called the Bovine Bardiche, which when wielded will randomly spawn a herd of cows that will assist you in smiting your enemies. Rumour has it that when this item is destroyed in Kanai's cube, a portal will be opened to not the cow level, which most certainly doesn't contain any cows or loot. The cow level is a lie. A massive thank you to Alan for this incredible list. If you guys are looking forward to Diablo 3 as much as I am, make sure you hit that like button, maybe subscribe if you enjoyed the content. For all things Switch all the time, keep it Switch up. See ya!